them to just introduce themselves and their organization and how that relates to planetary boundary as well. So maybe start with you, uh, Karaten, introduce yourself and your business. So I'm the president of the Lotec Lab, which is a French association. Since 2013, six years ago, we are trying to find the best low-tech innovation around the world. Uh, what, uh, what we call low-tech innovation is um, technology or services, which are three things. First one is useful, like the answers to basic needs, like access to water, energy, food, uh, recycling materials, waste management, everything. Number two is um, they are accessible to all, not high tech, but low tech. That means you can repair it, you can make it anywhere in the world. And the third one is, um, I would have say sustainable, but <laughs> Dimitri and you just say it was not a good word to use. So let's say eco-friendly and uh, uh, with respect for human. <laughs> um, so I can give just a few examples. Like in France, you can make solar heater to heat buildings with solar energy on very local resources on the um, uh, basic skills. Uh, like in Senegal, people make some wind turbines with recycled motors from printer parts. Uh, in Madagascar, some people make some, uh, grew some, grow some spirulina, which is a microalgae very good for nutrition, and that doesn't take up a lot of uh, space and resources. Or in Malaysia, people uh, raise um, black solder fly, which is a larvae that transforms any organic waste very efficiently. All this kind of uh, innovation, we call that low-tech. And we are trying to find the best low-tech of the world, uh, to test it, make experiment experimentation about them, and make documentation, and then spread them, promote them. Then anyone all around the world can copy it, because everything is in collaborative and in open source, and, uh, and spread it locally. Yeah. The idea behind is then when someone has got a good idea, anybody can replicate it. And to answer to global issues with a huge network of thousands of local solutions using local resources, local skill, local culture, local everything. Right. And so there are different projects in the association, and I'm in charge of Nomad de Mer, which is uh, I am on a laboratory sailing around the world since four years, okay. finding good solutions. We've been in more than 20 countries, wow. studied 40 low techs. So you're looking to kind of like uh, create kind of open source yeah. these amazing solutions, which, exactly. by the way, I don't hate the word sustainable. I just think we, we can kind of transform to another a way of thinking about things. <laughs> so that's, that's a really brilliant summary of like something. Now, uh, Christian, you have a slightly different business um, yeah. that you've uh, been leading. Um, so tell us about your business. Uh, first, I have to correct. Uh, Dimitri spoke uh, of L'Oréal and mentioned my name. I'm only the chairman of Clarence. A much smaller company, but uh, we have been involved. Just to give you a few numbers, we do we manufacture everything in France. We export uh, we export 93 percent of what we manufacture, and we have been involved uh, in uh, what we call, since the beginning, not sustainable uh, development, but responsible development, because we realize that every time that we have to make a decision, you know, maybe. We can make a wrong decision, but we can always change. So it's a question of responsibility. It's a question of behavior that lead to what people call sustainable development. Mm. And, uh, but we call it responsible. So I agree with you. The word has, has to change. Uh, to make the story, you know, we start with plants. The first product were 100% pure plant extract. That was in 64, so that was a long time in advance. In the year 85, two great events appear. The word biodiversity was for the first time used, and my daughter born in 85 too. So as a father, I consider that I had the responsibility as the, the, the president of a company 
to bring the company to do everything to protect the nature. And I must say that the biodiversity was for us the leading point. You know, we did a lot of things because we realized that a lot of mistake has been made in the past and we can correct them or participate to correct them. We had a lot of projects in order to protect the biodiversity. Naturally, we have to look when it's possible to use organic plants. Because when you use organic plants, you diminish the nitrogen because like that you have a, a soil that are pure. But also when you, you do, uh, uh, when you do biodiversity, you are thinking you have to know all the system. And this system, you know, is fascinating. And we have been doing a lot of things. We have been buying our own uh, lands in order to plant our own tree. We did something very interesting in uh, Picardy, where there is a uh, beetroot that grow. You know, usually it's a huge field with only a monoculture. We bring back agroforestry, mm -hmm. and we thought that we can have a very nice production of it. We also, you know, because I've been opening myself about 130 countries in the world in my life of business, and I was dreaming, you know, that I, I can still use a plane. So we, we were one of the first sponsors of Solar Impulse. I suppose that this morning you had the pleasure to meet uh, Mr. Bertrand Picard. His vision at the beginning was very simple. He said, if I can make a plane fly all over the world with only solar energy, it means that now you are not able to tell me something mm -hmm. is impossible. So one of the things, obviously, that what goes into your kind of products, um, you know, I, I can't, unfortunately, I can't say that I use Clarins myself. Um, but... It's uh, never too late. Huh? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what are you saying? Um, the <laughs> later, the better. <laughs> uh, but the, obviously, one of the things with Clarins is that we've got to get the Clarins product to people. Um, so how, because how are you working to work, try and work within planetary boundaries with the packaging for the Clarins products? Because obviously that's what probably a lot of people are interested in as well. Yeah, we, very, very early we start in the eco conception, eco conception, sorry. It's why we have been using a lot of glass instead of plastic. Uh, unfortunately, by the law in certain country, you cannot use a glass uh, bottle, you know, on a shower because it can be dangerous if it is broke. So we have to switch to plastic, and we have tr we have doing we have been doing a lot of things to reduce the size, to reduce the weight, to reduce the quantity of plastic that we use. Plastic is our number one problem today. We are trying to find solution. Fortunately, all our suppliers that work in this uh, in the field of uh, cosmetic are doing so. There is sometimes some bad news. The, the one that we had recently is that even if we do a vegetable plastic, a vegetable plastic, there is no system to recycle it. Mm. So we have to wait that people one day can recycle vegetable plastic. So we switch to something else. Yeah, this is one of the problems with uh, anything to do with uh, a, a closed system is you need to think about the uh, unintended consequences. So you go to a plant-based packaging, but unfortunately that can be worse for the environment than a plastic bottle, which is recyclable. Absolutely. And, and so it's, it's the unintended consequences. So with, uh, how are you with your very, obviously different uh, business here with your open source, low technology, how are you trying to think through like unintended consequences so that you, you might open source um, a technology but actually it's something that's uh, unable to be recycled at the end of a thing. Or is that something that you're trying to kind of create those kind of like the circular economy loop within it? Uh, we try to spread technologies that can be replicated everywhere with local resources. This is the best if you understand your uh, local uh, boundaries, then you can um, uh, better uh, manage your your waste on everything, mm. but there are some things like solar panels or everything that has to be made like it's a kind of high tech, and we are not against that. We even uh, studied like low tech how a computer can can be low tech. So each time, actually, we don't see the thing like there is low tech on high tech. Everything is in between. Like we are 
trying to do for everything, every technology, every service that is around us, we try to make them the more useful, the more accessible, and the more sustainable. okay, sustainable. No, no, it's good. Sustainable is <laughs> good. And one of the things that I'm uh, really interested in is that um, our society is uh, amazing because it's given us so many things. It makes life very easy for us. Um, but that also means that, um, like, when we see that picture um, of, like, the planetary boundaries, which in three areas have been crossed and in two other areas are near to being crossed, um, it kind of, like, gets to this kind of we feel uncomfortable, but it's actually we're just kind of going to maybe a passive denial um, or just even acceptance that there's nothing we can do. So how in, do you think in your organizations you're trying to create an energy for the, this kind of radical action so because we need to move on this very fast as the guys from Qantas were talking about so maybe in how in Claren that how is that radical action uh, being worked on I know there is first I will say the scientific way where we are working with our supplier and there is the actual way where we are supporting uh, uh, young entrep entreprises like yours, you know, I mean, uh, for instance, uh, everything starts with Explore, you know, in Concarneau, and uh, Corentin was uh, uh, helped by, uh, by Explore, but we are also, Clarence, we are involved in Plastic Odyssey, because we saw that one of the best way was to try to collect the plastic before it go very far in, uh, in, uh, in, in the water. So there is a lot of action that we can do today to diminish, you know, the, the print of, of pollution, because for us, plastic is a pollution, and there is many other types of, of pollution. So our way, you know, to answer to that is to work extremely heavily on eco-conception in order to be sure that we are going to reduce at the minimum, you know, the print of uh, any type of pollution. And the other way is to help a lot of small startups that are involved in one subject. It's why at the beginning I was in Solar Impulse. That was not a small startup, but it was a, a very interesting one because tomorrow we will be able to fly in planes that will be a hybrid planes like a car. And that's a big step, you know. So for me, I have nothing to do with planes except that I use them. But I'm very proud that our company support, you know, a new generation of planes. It was like a new adventure. Uh, we do, as I was speaking about Plastic Odyssey, because, you know, it's a, it's a, it's, they are good friends of yours, uh, Simon, and uh, they, they collect the plastic on the, on the beach. So they ask the young people, you know, a little bit everywhere in the world to collect those plastic. This way starts to be a way to make a little bit of money. They resell it to a system that they built, you know, to recycle the plastic. And if you want to see Plastic Odyssey, they are not far away from right. here just behind and uh, so we are very proud to see that we have been helping something uh, concrete you know something right. pragmatic so yeah. the word you know here we are in a, today we are we are using one word change now mm. and that's the key you know we have to change now in my company we say we say we have to go i'm speaking to dimitri because he was speaking about uh, uh, that we have to change our way we have to learn how to go out of our comfort zone every day. Yeah, yeah. And me, you know, what I do, I mean, I don't know if I will switch my phone, but uh, because otherwise I don't sleep. You know, I wake up every hour to be uh, afraid to, that I'm not. And, but what I do, you know, every time when I go to the office, I try to change my way. I must say that with uh, Anne Hidalgo, it's very easy because there is so many holes, a little bit everywhere that you have to change by force. But you know, you have every day, you have to learn to go out of your comfort zone. Yeah. And that's one of the key issues. So to give a simple answer, eco-conception, and we are working a lot with the science, and I think that we are making a lot of progress. Right. Because I'm not the only one. I come back to all the cosmetic industry. We need to be, we sell beauty, we have to keep a beautiful world. <laughs> yes, so that's, uh, that's not complicated. That's great. And so then, like, you know, with your low-tech lab, how are you kind of inspiring that radical action so we can get those heroes of change? One thing I already spoke about that is technical, spreading technical um, knowledge. And the other one, which is becoming more and more important, 
uh, after uh, the experiences we made this year, last year is we think that we need to make people dream about something else. Mm. Like, you know, like 20 years before, uh, people who were speaking about ecology were a bit, uh, I would say, boring or not, it was not enthusiastic. And now we have to make people understand that we could have much healthier and happier and more sustainable uh, lifestyles, ways of life than now. And we just have to change our indicators and we have to like, show that the future can be much better, actually. And it's good that we have uh, planet boundaries. I think we would be become crazy with without that. So with my organization, we try to show, to inspire, and to make uh, dreams about so a better can lifestyle. Can you give a story, um, like a, one where you've been in a country where you've like, actually interacted with people and you've seen their journey where yeah. they've used their low-tech? We've done 25 movies for television to, sh to show different stories. And, um, and we make a lot of videos also for internet. And just in 2019, more than 5 million people could see those videos and everything. And one which was very important for me was our stopover in, in Japan. We met uh, people from a village of 1,400 uh, uh, inhabitants uh, that became zero waste village. So um, they um, separate everything in the, in the bins and everything, so we saw the technical aspect. But after, by interviewing the people, we met some people that are going uh, further than that. They are becoming like minimalists, or I don't know how to say in French, in English, uh, simplicité volontaire, like they are becoming more and more... Um, Minimalist. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of minimalism. And those people were so happy to live like that. We just understood that you can really yeah, be happier and healthier too. And, and yeah, sustainable. So you can go, that's what I'm hearing is that you, those people that have gone on a journey, they went to kind of like uh, no waste. And then they be, they, because they were inspired by like this no waste, then they went, Why, what else do I not need? Um, um, but we always need beauty. Um, it's, the world is beautiful, people can be beautiful. And so I think that was a, a fantastic chat in our little coffee shop here. Um, so I would like to thank both of you so much for the work that you're doing uh, to inspire uh, sustainability. Um, even, I've got to say, I called my business Inspiring Sustainability before I worked out what else I could call it. So I, you know, I hold my <laughs> hand up there. Um, so just th thank you so much for joining us on stage, sharing your journeys, and I'm sure uh, you've maybe got a little bit of time uh, afterwards, hopefully, if anybody wants to come and ask you any questions. So a round of applause.